75,000 Galactars on the rocks. Straight up hard currency. You've never been one to pull punches, Rex. I almost like that in a man. You don't have a problem taking a check, do you? No problem. As long as you own the bank they're drawn on, I'll take your check. Well, this certainly is a fine piece of art. Such fond memories. So tell me, Rex, did you have any trouble finding it? Did I have any trouble? You just stay seated and I'll tell you about the so-called piece of cake job you sent me on. Finding the planet was easy. Too easy, in fact. My mass detector was going crazy, so I had to be close. There it is. Okay, Pro, do your stuff. Heck! 
with that. Target damaged, sir. She's not going anywhere. Good. Move in and finish her off. Well, I've talked my way out of words. Slippery pig calling large obnoxious vessel. Do you read? Sir, the pilot's trying to speak with us. On your monitor. Yes, sir. Hey, can we talk this over? I'm only a tourist. You have found our planet, and you must die. Nothing personal. Planet? What planet? I don't know what you're talking about. Now if you'd kindly stop shooting at me, I'll be on my way. Pop it wasn't blocked, sir. Good. Let's end this. All right. Well, that was an interesting introduction. Welcome, guys, to my Let's Play of Rex Nebular. Now, I should explain, this game is a game that was requ requested by one of you guys. Finally getting to it. I apologize if a lot of these requests I haven't got to. Um, some of the games that have been requested, I cannot run on my computer. Uh, but don't worry, I do have an older computer, I just need to actually, you know, get it, basically have access to it, it's locked, so I need to, and you know, unlock the password, blah blah blah, that kind of thing. Um, and some of them I've just been waiting for previous Let's Plays to finish, and since Grey Matter, I finally beat that game, we can kind of do a request. So I looked at my list. Uh, what was it? Congo, I have to try on the old computer. Uh, Scratches, same boat. Um, Deponia. I don't think I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> uh, there's also Ripley's Believe It or Not, which also I have to try on the old computer. And finally, this one. I think that's all of them. Oh, I could be wrong. Uh, this one as well. And this one, I... Bought on the Steam sale. It's been sitting on my computer, so it's like, why not? Let's give this a shot. I have never heard of this series. It's gonna be an interesting one. Uh, it's point and click, clearly, but I don't know about much about this series at all. 
Besides, the game has gender bender or something in it. So, we're going to see how it goes. I am fully prepared to save often. Once again, this is a blind playthrough. Let's hope for the best here. Let's start a new game. Ah, uh, select a difficulty. Um, novice. Easy. Advance. Difficult. <laughs> I kind of want to go easy, but we'll go difficult. We'll go advance. And it's time for me to wait. I'm waiting. Wait. Select a difficulty level. Okay. Log on. Jeez, was an awful dream. I dreamed I was shot down. And crashed into the... Oh no. Log off. Okay, so our inventory spins. Spin to what? Oh, this dice! Look at the mirror. Oh, look at the fuzzy dice. Possibly the only thing your exterior decorator did that doesn't cause you to double over and violently heave your guts out. You are the fuzzy dice man. Okay. How does that work with a mirror so high up and I, I don't understand the physics. What's- oh my god, there's a thing called butts. Why is there a thing called butts? I don't... Uh, I... Play a video game. In all the time this machine had been here, you have yet to figure out what insert quarter means. Well, you insert a quarter. Obviously. What else? Does it not give me... Oh, I... Okay. Okay, I have to hold to tell me... Ah, oh, I see. Walk to engineering controls. Walk to curtains. Uh... Look at... Curtains. Wincing at the drapes on the wrath. You swear to use them to light the fire when you burn your ex-decorator at the stake. Oh my. Uh, I guess we can look at the engineer controls. The engineer controls allow you to monitor the flow of power to the dimensional rift engines as you prepare to translate the ship into hyperspace. Right now, the panel is completely dead. So something must be wrong with your engines like you don't have them anymore. Huh. Look at the view screen. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Wait. Oh, there's a person. Wait a second. Nice cardboard box bikini, I guess. That was random. Dang. Yeah, I know. That sweet cardboard box bikini. That probe landed on a wet beach. It must have shorted out. Well, at least you still have space boy. Oh, oh dear. Uh, target computer. Shield status panel. Walk across floor. Okay, is there short keys? Or do I have to click on these? Looks like I have to. Look at floor. You look carefully at the floor and make a mental note that it is, in fact, the floor. Further revelations are not immediately forthcoming, however. So I have to click... Okay, look at target computer. The target computer reports that it has calculated firm firing solutions on three nearby belligerent guppies and is now running a full threat ass assessment on the suspicious looking seaweed bank up ahead. I don't like the fact it's not telling me what is what when I'm walking over them. Not walking, but hovering over them. The inner hull of your ship is made entirely of tough sterinium. The outer hull consisting mostly of crudium and some duct tape unfortunately didn't do what too well in the re-entry. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't like how I have to click and yeah. Imagine that. After plummeting 40,000 feet at an extremely high velocity and landing with the force of a 5,000 megaton neutron bomb, the control panel is damaged. Worst of all, the warranty expired last week. Typical. Typical warranty. Uh, escape hatch, shield, thingy majiggy, wiggy thingy, shield modulator, that's for the word. The shield access panel is now open, revealing the shield subsystem circuits and enhancement slots. In one of the slots is the 51 prong quadric shield modulator, which you keep here, just in case it should come loose if you tug on it. I feel like I should save. How do I save? Escape? Oh, oh wait, we gotta wait. Save game. Okay. 
Wait, we saved. So let's see what happens if I can take this shield thingy, Majiggy. Take shield access panel. You can't take that. God damn it. Can I pull on it? You grab the shield access panel and yank it on it a few times. Nothing particularly interest happens, and your interest in the project quickly laps. So what's this thing I'm looking at here? What is this? Oh, the log. Voice activated, auto transcribing audio log. Bezo bodies, novelty shop, asteroid, blah blah blah. Cover, genuine leather. Okay, can we open it? I can't think of a way to get this particular log open. Read? Oh. You quickly read a random page from your log. Wow, you really recorded some neat stuff in here. Oh, okay. Um, I guess we can look at the escape panel. Or hatch, pardon. That's the emergency escape hatch. Emergency being the key word here. It is activated by explosive bolts and opening it under present circumstances would flood this cockpit in seconds flat. No oxygen max pops out of the ceiling and you can't use your seat as a flotation device. So your best bet is to try the main airlock since it's apparently still clear of mud. Can I still open it? No. Okay, so I need to find the air hatch. Engineering curtains, video game, out of oh, walk across floor, out of hall. The inner hall of your ship is made to okay, yes, 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 yes. Look at the inner hall okay, to PPGB. Uh oh, go to life support section. Yes, please. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> Walk to binoculars. Oh, hey. Oh, baby. Oh, dear. Okay, let's take those binoculars from the perverted poster there. Binoculars. Taking your trusty binoculars off the hook reveals a previously obscure portion of the poster. He spent a few moments. Perv. <laughs> perv. Okay, let's go look at the poster. Oh, my goodness. He's such a perv. Uh, the window leads to your bedroom. In fact, it provides the most convenient ingress from your bed, and you come stumbling through it every morning with a sincere promise that you are now officially on the wagon. The bedroom is mostly filled with your dirty underwear, so there's not much point in going in there unless you're curious about the origins of bubonic plague. Oh my goodness, do your laundry man. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna window, I'm gonna walk to bulkhead. Can you go get bulkhead? You look carefully at the bulkhead and make a mental note that it is, in fact, a bulkhead. Further revelations are not immediately forthcoming, however. Walk to drawer. Look at drawer. The sum total of all of your clean clothes at any given moment can generally be found crammed into this drawer. They are jammed in so tight, in fact, that they have achieved a new state of matter and have their own gravitational field. Don't even try to close this thing. No chance. You would need a crowbar and possibly a steam shovel to remove a few pounds of clothes first. Then you may be able to move this thing. Uh, can we take some clothes? You can't take that. Can we look at the closet? This is where you keep your wardrobe. A few old shirts you never wear are slightly decomposing on the- How do they de decompose? At one point, the closet contains several dozen mothballs. They disappear one night when you were severely intoxicated. I had the money. Yeah, that, that wouldn't have agreed well. Leave everything where it is because it would just disagree in your hand. Okay. There's a weight machine. Theoretically, the weight machine is here to keep you, the interstellar voyager, in top physical shape as you ply the uncharted depths of outer space. In practice, it makes a nice piece of postmodern sculpture and you can drag it around to serve as a coffee table or footstool when you need when the need arise. Walk to the Robo Kitchen. You're still incapable of using most of this thing's features. You pretty much gave up after taking two days to figure out how to prepare baked water. Oh dear. Okay, Frigerio. God, it's it's alive. What's well, alive? This is a feasting mass of congealed fungus that you knew. Ah, can we take the burger? Ah, we can. 
you delicately picked up the highly toxic burger, being careful not to disturb any of its ingenious life forms. Oh good, we got a questionable burger. Fantastic. Can we... Okay, okay. Left mouse is to walk, right one is to walk. Fantastic. Even a veteran, veteran bacteriist would get down on his knees and wrench if he had to look at the contents of this refrigerator for very long. The country coroner himself couldn't bear the sight of that festering mass of fungus, fungus you call a sandwich. In the back, on a plate of what might be loosely referred to as spaghetti, a colony of at least 20 Martian stingworts appear to be entering its larval phase. Okay. Um, so let's look at table. You look carefully at the table and make mental notes that it is in fact a table. Further revelations are not merely forthcoming, however. So what's this? Where are we heading? I hit go and I'm going this way. Uh oh. Oh my. It's also very loud. Oh, and it's a turkey. And it's a mouse. Or a hamster. Auxiliary power module, also known as Binky. Cute little guy, isn't he? He may not look it, but Binky is actually a fully equipped Stellatron XJ. 6281Q4 Mark 12 Bionic Hamsteroid, complete with QR3 fusion pack whiskers and a peanut sized post trionic brain. Believe it or not, Binky is quite capable of maintaining life support levels in this crap indefinitely. Okay, what about the turkey? Gosh, that turkey shit does look tasty. Maybe now would be a good time to eat it. Can we just take it? Oh. Oh my, the turkey just exploded! Looks like that banister board you savage isn't up to snuff. Can we take Binky? Don't touch Binky. Right now he's the only thing between you and a class 1 hyperdrive contaminant breach. This generally involves the hyperdrive shunt, that big red thing in the middle of the room, exploding with enough force to split the planet in half. Besides, if you touch Binky with your bare hands, the electric charge will probably blow your hand off. So I can't take Binky. Sad panda. What is this? Uh, warp coil. The RQ-11 Kagaski warp coil is ordinarily found at the base of the dimensional rift engine mount and is the primary catechist for the translation translating the strip into hyperspace. This particular unit, however, now occupies the engineering floor room and has obviously seen better days, having recently been rather abruptly belched through a five-foot bulkhead by the quantum shunt. It looks like you're going to have to find another ride off this rock, since this baby ain't going nowhere. There's a little thing here about time module. On the workbench is a timing device that you recently repaired. Although it was designed to fire retro burners at fixed intervals, you found a better use for it to let you know when the turkey was done. Oh, it's definitely done! <laughs> Let's take it. This timer module, though, was an integral part of your ship until you crash landed. It still works, but you probably shouldn't bet your life on its accuracy. Okay. Uh, what's this? What's this orange thing? Rebreather. This is an emergency rebreather which seems to have fallen off its safety mount. It allows the wearer to breathe in an in environment, such as underwater or in a men's locker room. Perfect. Let's take it. This is an oxygen refrigerator. Refurb oh my god. This is an oxygen rebreather. Where am I getting that other word? Who knows? You picked up in the cow plug 8 while you were stranded there fixing your hyperdrive shunt. Easily the classiest way to see the great boom breeze up close. Okay, let's look at the shield generator. Placa Vaughn. Holy crap, shield generator. If it weren't for this baby right here, you would probably be a rapidly expanding cloud of subtonic particles. The Pekavash shield generator is, in layman's turn, responsible for keeping the ship from being blossomed into tiny chunks by such malevolent energies as might happen to cross this path. Apart from your <coughs> legendary piloting skills, the PSG is the main reason you survived your recent encounter. Now get your mind off, Miss Cup Spider, and start thinking about getting past this big warship. Assuming you make you ever make orbit again, that is. Uh yeah, the coal, why not? As you stare tenderly at the coal for several minutes, a yawn noisily escapes from your mouth. Can we take the coal? 
And get your hands dirty? Never. I do see a shovel, though. You look carefully at the shovel and make a mental note that it is, in fact, a shovel. Further revelations are not nearly forthcoming, however. Can we take it? You can't take the shovel because the furnace heat has welded the metal to the- Well, how- Okay. Uh, furnace. Yep, it's a furnace. Alright. A StarTech Module 8 Hyperdrive Blast Furnace, to be precise. It is capable of reaching temperatures similar to- To- Well, uh, you know. The hot place where snowballs don't stand a chance. Right now, the door is hanging open, so things are nice and toasty around here. Can we close it? The hinges appear to be broken. Damn it. We look at the pressure gauge. The gauge indicates the pressure in the large overhead pipes. As you can see, the flow is now somewhat erratic, which just have, might have something to do with being shot down and crashing to the ocean floor. Ah, uh, big pipes. Ordinarily, these pipes deliver superheated steam from the hyperdrive jump unit to the dimensional rift engines. Right now, they seem to be doing a better job at delivering the aforementioned steam into the local environment. Well, you can always come back here and get your clothes pressed. Woo. Okay, I think that's it. We're gonna leave Binky alone. I'm gonna miss you, Binky. I'm- wait, what is this? Wait, wait, wait. We didn't look at the controls. We didn't look at the controls! No, I don't want to wait. God damn it. I don't want to wait. We need to go back into that really loud room and look at those controllers. This is the manual overdrive for the hyperdrive and the main power system. Normally you could alter the power grid from here or control engine output levels. The console evidently sustained some damage during the crash landing because it's now completely dead. Oh, fantastic. Okay, now we can get out of here. This is an incredibly loud room. Now it's peaceful. Thank goodness. Okay, well, I guess we go up. Or can we look in the- oh, medicine cabin. Being the man you are, you can't help but briefly pause and admire yourself in the medicine cabin mirror. You are elated to see that the hideous cold sore you earned last month has finally cleared up. Okay, well, let's open the medicine cabinet. We can. Well, let's see. You got a couple of old toothbrushes, a used up stick of deodorant from last year you were saving for emergency. And that festering pile of dried up toothpaste left over from when the crust tube exploded a couple years ago. Can we take anything from there? You can't take that. Uh, the doorway leads to what you loosely call a bread, eh, loosely call a bedroom. The term large festering pit of dirty undergar undergarments is more to the point. You haven't been able to clean it since your snow shovel broke. See, so I decided to use the window to get in and out of your bed. You have given up on the idea of actually walking in the room. Lazy son of a bitch. Ah, uh, stealing. Or ceiling. Maybe if you stare at it long enough, something really important will happen that will help you escape this planet. Not. Alright, well, let's climb up the ladder. You place the rebreather in your mouth, finding it in working order, you proceed to flood the- Oh, okay, we're guess we're leaving. Okay, we're leaving. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yikes. What- what's the- what's with the pingy? Log on. Okay, that crazy woman is still up there. Better keep away from the surface. And find another way to dry land. Hope I can find it soon. The stupid rebreather is hurting my mouth. Log off. Okay. Well, I'm gonna save. Um. Cause I save often. Um. If I could type. If I could type. There we go. And I'm curious. Let's let's go up above. I'm wondering if. He'll go up. Oh, we can go up. Let's see what happens. Yikes. Okay. But that crazy woman is up there. Okay, so we absolutely can't go up there. She's still up there. Remember, hell hath no fury. Okay. So 
So what can I do here? Let me look at seaweed. Although it is considered a delicacy by some cultures, you personally find seaweed unappealing. Uh, what is this? An, an, an enemy. There we go. It looks like something you would order from a florist on Mother's Day. Don't take it. Get her some bonbons. Okay. Uh, look at ship. It appears that the slippery pig hasn't seen his last has seen his last flight. All that remains is the inner safety hall, the engine, weapons, and basically everything outside the environment containment shell were either shot off or burned off during re-entry. Of course, being buried under a few hundred tons of rock is no picnic either. The ship has had it. You're just going to have to find another way out this planet. What about Binky? What about that cute little hamster? We're just going to abandon it? You murderer. Anywho, I should end the episode here, guys. Thank you guys for watching the first episode of Rex Nebular. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into, but we'll find out. Um, as usual, let me know what you think. Give me a comment, a like, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And of course, check out my other point and click let's plays. And of course, check out my other point and click let's plays. And with all said and done, you guys have a good night, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!